Have you noticed this little toggle switch in your Outlook quietly trying to get you to turn it on? If you've been on the fence about switching to the latest version of Outlook, I'm here to give you a little nudge in the right direction. In this video, I'm going to walk you through five solid reasons to flip that switch and upgrade to the new Outlook. If you're already using Outlook for email, you're probably also using the Outlook calendar to schedule meetings and events, and maybe you're even using Microsoft to do to manage your tasks. If you haven't tapped into this synergy yet, it's probably worth considering. My day brings it all together, placing your emails, appointments, and tasks all on one streamlined page. This integration can really help your productivity, minimizing the need to switch between different applications and windows. Very often, I fall into the trap of letting emails dictate the start of my day. The only thing that really pulls me out of my emails is when I have meetings that I have to join next. Now, my day lays out my calendar and daily tasks right next to my inbox. And this really allows me to approach my day with more intention. And it also allows me to prioritize my day more effectively rather than getting pulled into the email vortex. You'll find the My Day icon on the top right hand corner of your window. So if you hover over it, it'll say My Day. If you click on it, it'll open up your sidebar, which is split into two parts, one for calendar and one for to do. Now within the to do tab, adding a task is super easy. I just have to click into where it says add a task and just start typing. Hit enter, that'll add it to the list. And then of course you can continue doing this. Another way is to drag an email. So let's say this weekly recap I need to follow up on, I can click and just drag and add as a task. And you'll see that it now appears here on top. And if I wanted to organize the list of tasks that I have, just grab onto this handle and arrange them however you want to see them on this list. If we move over to the calendar tab, we have two options. Right now, we are on the agenda view. You can toggle to look at it by day view. The day view displays your entire daily schedule, while the agenda view only highlights specific times when you actually have appointments or events. And then up here by default, it's only showing you the calendar for the week, but you can expand it by clicking on this arrow and you can see the calendar for the full month. And then one thing to mention here is that even though we're in the calendar view, you see that we still have the option to add a task for this day. So you don't have to necessarily go to the to-do tab. You can do all that within the calendar tab. And this is generally the view that I prefer in my sidecar because I like to see my email to the left and my calendar to the right and still have the ability to add tasks without necessarily having to go to the to-do tab. And then within the calendar view, if you wanted to create a new event, you can click on the plus new event sign and then you can add in the details. Or let's say if you were in the day view, you can just double click on any of the time slots and that'll allow you to create a new event as well. And let's say I wanted to reschedule a meeting that's already on the calendar. All I have to do is just click on it and drag it to a new slot. So just like before, when we dragged an email to turn it into a task, you can do the same with event. So if I drag this email, I could add as an event. If I drop it, it opens up a dialog box where I can complete the rest of the info and then either hit save. But in this case, I have people who are being invited to this event. So I would be hitting send. I'm going to close out of here. And this integration is really neat because I'm going to go back to my to do because I forgot to mention this earlier. So this is the task that I dragged in. You can see the little email icon because I dragged that email into the task pane to convert it into a task. So if I actually click on this email button here, it opens up the original email, which is great because it gives some context to the task that I added to my to do. So this I think is a super helpful feature. Hi, as I was editing this video, I realized just how much of the screen I had to blur out because I am using my work email account with my work to do and their information that I didn't want to share. So I hope you understand. I know it's a little bit frustrating, but I hope you can still follow along. Thank you. And now back to the video. 
Using My Day can really boost your productivity by reducing the time spent switching between applications to manage emails, tasks, and appointments. It's really all about efficiency, keeping you organized and focused from a single pane. The next two tips are incredibly useful features in Outlook that can really help you manage your inbox more effectively. Pinning and snoozing emails. These features are perfect for prioritizing your messages and controlling when you deal with them. Let's say I have an important email that I don't want to get buried under new emails as they come in. So let's grab this email here. If I hover over the email, you'll see that we have three little icons that show up. One of them is a pin. So if I click on it, notice how that message now moves all the way to the top and it's pinned. So this email message will always remain at the top of your inbox, even as new emails come in. Now, when you are ready to remove it, you just have to unclick the pin and it'll go back to its original place. Let's say you get an email that's important but not urgent and you want to deal with it sometimes later in the week. Snoozing is an excellent tool for that. It temporarily removes emails from your inbox and brings them back at a more suitable time. To snooze an email, you just have to select the email. So let's say this one here. Go to the top and you'll see an icon that looks like a clock. Now if you click on it, you have the option to snooze this email for later today, tomorrow, this weekend, next week, or you can set a custom date. And once I do that, let's say I want to change this to tomorrow morning and hit save, that email actually disappears from this list and it'll come back to me tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So snoozing is perfect for managing less urgent emails without forgetting them entirely. And it really helps you keep your inbox clean, focusing only on the immediate tasks at hand. Sometimes you want to send an email at a very specific time, but you know that you're not going to be at your desk. Or sometimes you're catching up with work on a weekend or evening, and you don't want to encroach on your team's personal time. Outlook's email scheduling feature is your solution for this. Here's how to use it. So you would start by starting an email like you would normally and type in a random message, a random subject, and I'm just going to send it to myself. Now, rather than hitting send, hit the drop down and you'll be presented with an option to schedule send. And if I click on that, we have some preset options. We can send tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. They're the same. I'm going to choose custom time and make it Monday at 9 a.m. Hit send. When you do that, the email doesn't disappear. It's actually sitting in your draft. So here's a message that we just composed. And if you change your mind and you want to send it immediately, you can just click on send here, or you can still alter the date and time when you want this message to be sent. So this feature is a fantastic way to manage your communications more thoughtfully and you ensure that your emails are sent at an appropriate time, really enhancing the likelihood that they'll be read and responded to promptly. In terms of the new appearance of Outlook, it seems that Microsoft really wanted to adopt the minimalist approach. The first thing that you might notice is that it does really appear quite slick and very similar to the web version of Microsoft Outlook. Um, if you compare this version to the old original version, well, I shouldn't say original, but the older version of Outlook, if this isn't toggled on, this is what it looks like. Uh, so you can see the newer version does look much more modern. And you'll notice that the ribbon on top has been simplified and it's really easier to navigate in my opinion. If you do prefer the older ribbon, you can click on the little arrow and choose classic ribbon. But again, I prefer the minimalistic layout, so I'm going to go with the simplified ribbon. And the other thing that you have is if you go to view, and this also exists in the older version as well, but you can control the density. So you can choose roomy, cozy, 
or a compact. That's too much for me. I'm going to go to, actually, I'm going to go back to Rumi. And that looks just about right for me. And another thing is now you have the option to access your settings more easily. So you have this cog for view settings. And here you can change things like if you go to the account, you can add a signature or modify an existing one. You can set up your automatic replies when you're out of the office. And if you go back to general under appearance, you can enable things like dark mode. So again, all of these options were available in the original version or the older version of Outlook, but they were just harder to access. So these were the five reasons why I like the new version of Outlook. I really do encourage you to give it a try. If you don't like it, it's really easy to switch back to the old version. Just um, toggle the button off and restart Outlook. There's no uninstalling the current version and reinstalling the original. So I really don't see the downside uh, for you to try it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to click on the like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more productivity contents like this. If you want to learn how to integrate Outlook with OneNote, check out this video next.